Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Keep it real. Think slow. We should get through it just fine. A little rider, Donnie. Donnie, a little rider. Okay, let's run. Okay. The word sin, S-I-N, comes from the word sine, S-I-N-E. If you look at that, this is a sine wave. Yeah? It's a sine wave. The straight line that you're seeing, that's called linear time. That's going from your birth to your death, okay? The wavy line, that's a sine wave, okay? That's a sine wave. Bear with me. The word sine in physics is abbreviated as sin, okay? Now, there is another wave, it's gonna be in blue, that runs along the same, the same line as time, okay? And what that is, is it goes like this. This one is called a cosine wave, as in cosiner. That's right where that comes from. That's a cosine because it rides the back is so tight to the other wave, it's called a cosine wave. Now, you see, you have red and blue, and they both are interacting with time. So, one is time, one is space, okay? Those two together create time and space. Red and blue. Here we have a four six millimeter ball magnets. I just have two of them taped white and two of them taped red. I'm hanging my tripod here. This is a uh, N45 Gauss six inch by two inch, extremely powerful beast. You probably think I just got done spinning the 
the uh, two ball magnets, but no, they've, they've been uh, twitching like that for hours now. The reason being is that they are hovering a hair off center of the centripetal returning convergent magnetic field, and it's perpetually twitching like that because it's twitching in the, uh, the inflowing centripetal convergent field. But uh, let's do another swing here again. You can see the precession angle. Actually, I uh, lowered the tripod. I get a much longer spin if I raise it up. It will actually sit there and dance like that for endless periods of time that it's processing in the flow of the centripetal returning from the other side. Right now, we're getting a sawtooth wave, but we can turn it in this direction. And now we're getting a triangle wave. We can turn it back and you can see the change happening as it moves from one wave shape to the next. And now we have a square wave. We can move that over into pulse. So you can see, not only can you choose the standard waveforms, you can choose someplace between them. And uh, the way to think about this with square wave, it's the easy one to think about, is that uh, a square wave is essentially composed of a number of sine waves, okay? Uh, and essentially they're all odd harmonics of each other, or the fundamental and its odd harmonics, I should say. So uh, if we have got a square wave that's you know, ideal, 50% duty cycle, and continuous, goes on forever, uh, we can say it's really composed of a sine wave at the fundamental frequency at the same period, same frequency, and then added to that uh, the third harmonic, which is three times that frequency, and then the fifth harmonic, the seventh, the ninth, etc., etc., etc. The faster the rise and fall time, the more high order harmonics you have. Okay. And now uh, they're not all added together just to willy nilly, they are at a, a specific amplitudes uh, that kind of make an ideal square wave. And kind of the way it works out is that uh, if we call the fundamental the magnitude of that, okay, we call that one, okay, just a unit one, then the third harmonic is going to be one-third that value, the third harmonic, so it's one over the harmonic value of the magnitude. So we can kind of build a table and say that, okay, if the fundamental has a magnitude of one, the third harmonic is going to have a magnitude of one-third, the fifth harmonic a magnitude of one-fifth, the seventh, one-seventh,
a converter. I don't know. Nobody knows. But that's what it does. That's the only thing it can do because that's how everything works. Yeah, you could say it's taking energy from another dimension, counter space.